Does the holiday season seem longer to you than perhaps when you were a kid? If so, you aren't alone. Before the turn of the century, it was common practice for radio broadcasting stations to start incorporating Christmas songs in early December, then converting to an all-Christmas playlist on December 24th or 25th. In the early 2000s, stations began playing an exclusively Christmas format for the entire month of December. Give it a couple more years, and we'd find that these same stations would start even earlier, converting the day after Thanksgiving. This phenomenon is known as Christmas creep. And no, not that one. Christmas creep defines a trend not just with radio stations, but with retail stores to push the Christmas season earlier and earlier in the year. This cognizant push from the industry allows retailers and radio stations alike to capitalize fully on the holiday market. It's November, and I feel the call to Christmas that my local Walmart has told me I should feel. So let's roll with the creep and make some bargain brand Christmas music. Let's talk lo-fi hip-hop. Unless you've been living under a rock and don't know what lo-fi hip-hop is, or haven't been suggested these wildly popular 24-hour live streams of chill beats to study and relax to by the YouTube algorithm, lo-fi hip-hop is an internet-born genre turned meme, which is characterized by its instrumental chopped up jazz samples, unquantized sidechain dilla beats, vinyl crackle, use of nostalgia, and of course, anime girl. I'm interested in how and why this genre became a thing, how to make it, what it has to offer, and what its popularity and relatability has to say about the world we live in. I chose to explore this genre through Christmas music, and I'll explain a little bit about why I chose to do that later in this video. But for now, kick back, relax, and I'm wishing you all a very lo-fi Christmas. Let's start off with the aesthetic. Lo-fi music takes advantage of what cultural theorist Svetlana Boehm coined as reflective nostalgia, which engages hyper-specific memories of popular media from our childhood, like anxious Spongebob or cosmic Uncle Iroh, coupled with an abstract longing for a past which the listener is fully aware never existed. Christmas Time Is Here is a good place to start. The song was written by Lee Mendelssohn and Vince Guaraldi for the Charlie Brown Christmas Special in 1965. Many of us remember watching this Christmas special, at least peripherally every year when we were kids. So in this case, we don't need to divorce audio from visual. The hyper-specific association is literally baked into the essence of Charlie Brown himself. A sense of longing, yearning for an unreachable, not-so-distant past, existential dread. It's all just part of the lo-fi style. So when Charlie Brown says, I think there must be something wrong with me, Linus. Christmas is coming, but I'm not happy. I don't feel the way I'm supposed to feel. We've all been there which makes this song such a great candidate for the lo-fi style. I recorded the chords for this on an old piano I've been fixing up, which I had decided not to tune before recording because I liked the off-kilter, out-of-tune vibe it had. I put the main melody on a toy piano whose pitch is also degraded over the decades. The thinking here is that the toy piano encapsulates some of the spirit of the lo-fi aesthetic, being a relic from the past yet still innocent and elegantly simple.
proposition, I find it most useful to think of lo-fi as a philosophy and a principle rather than a set of sounds that make up a genre. What do I mean by this? Well, we could take the composite elements of lo-fi, old jazz samples, chill beats, and vinyl crackle, slap them all together and get a pretty convincing lo-fi song. But to me, this seems uh, a little bit lazy and perhaps a classic example of how the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. There should always be a good reason behind our artistic decisions. Sonic degradation, for example, is ubiquitous in all lo-fi music, sure. But how might we use this feature to tell a good story with our music? Well, since we're going with the Christmas theme here, what if we use sonic degradation to represent the physical degradation of one Frosty the Snowman? I am alive! What a neat thing to happen to a nice guy like me. Ah yes, the 1969 holiday cartoon that features a snowman who has come to life only to immediately face the inevitability of his own death. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Children's shows, you gotta love them. Uh oh. What's the matter, Frosty? Who? Is there a thermometer around here? Over there in the wall. Why? <laughs> Oh, I was afraid of that. The narrative elements in the Frosty story reflect the concerns of lo-fi and its listeners, as the lo-fi vibe can easily be felt staring outside a rainy window at 2 a.m. while contemplating the implications of your own mortality. By choosing to sample the crackle of candlelight, whose flame represents a spark of life but also implies its brevity and fragility, we can replace the typical vinyl crackle sound you'd hear in this genre in order to thread deeper ties to the story which our music is about. We can take this a step further by intentionally degrading elements of the song as it goes on. Using bit crushers and modulation effects, the song decays more and more until, like Frosty, the track melts into a void of undefined emptiness. Again, sonic degradation not for the purposes of sounding lo-fi, but as a means to tell the story that you want to tell. Practice lo-fi as a philosophy. Critics of the lo-fi genre are quick to point out that because the bar to entry for lo-fi music is so, well, low, that the music somehow has less merit. Anyone with a DAW and a Splice membership can pretty much pump out a decent sounding lo-fi track in under an hour. Does this devalue the music? I think we might be approaching this question in the wrong way. It's important to analyze music in the lens in which it was created. It's also important to take into consideration who the music was made for. We listen to folk not for the campfire chord changes, but for the nuanced and deep stories that the lyrics tell. It's not that we couldn't analyze Indonesian gamelan, for instance, through a Western music theory perspective, it's that ignoring the Indonesian music theory perspective leaves us with an incomplete understanding of how the music works and functions. It's in the name, lo-fi beats to study and relax to. 
This music is passive. It's meant to evoke a vibe, but not necessarily be noticed. It's meant to be meditative. Something that drowns out the noisy world around us to give us focus. Now, big disclaimer, I'm not saying that there isn't bad lo-fi hip-hop. There most certainly is. What I'm trying to get at is the dividing line between mastery and amateur hour is fairly subtle. When analyzing this stuff, I find it best to adopt a micro perspective. That is, listening for ornamentation, the flow from section to section, the little bits of ear candy, and quality production choices. Basically the little things that help make your music feel unique, and help set you apart from just a guy with a DAW and a splice membership. <laughs> I made a video a while back talking about the Ghibli chord, which is essentially a specific voicing of this major 9 chord. In that video, I said the chord makes you feel nostalgic for a place you've never been. I think that quality is shared in the essence of lo-fi. There is a certain level of abstraction, which to me feels like modern day impressionism. The 19th century art movement which sought to explore emotion and movement and sensation through expressive painting. Artists like Monet, whose painting Impression Sunrise gave name to the movement, aimed to capture impressions of the world around them. They weren't interested in the refined, hyper-detailed art of the time. They were instead concerned with how to evoke a mood rather than a realistic depiction of existence. Impressionism in the world of art soon spread to the underworld of music, and composers like Debussy and Ravel composed what at the time were radical pieces which threw melody out the window in favor for atmosphere and timbre. To me, Impression Sunrise feels like how lo-fi sounds. If a good lo-fi track hasn't thrown out the melody entirely, there's a good chance it uses an elusive one. Usually something simple, repeated in a manner in which it fades to the background, unnoticed and blurred. Impressionist composers tend to favor atmosphere and vague harmony to melody or detail. In the same way, lo-fi ignores the hooks to focus on production. At its core, lo-fi, like impressionism, seeks to capture a moment suspended in time. I would argue that it's no accident that these off-kilter, unquantized Dilla beats are so ubiquitous in the genre. They fundamentally break from reality. Our expectation is to hear locked-in grooves and grid-based drums. It represents the world in high detail. If lo-fi is like modern-day impressionism, it's no wonder that even the drums are a vague sketch of what you would expect drums to sound like. This can actually be applied to pitch and harmony as well. Microtones, or notes in between our western notes, will often pop up in the canon of lo-fi music. Adam Neely made a great video a while back where he explored 
more microtonal lo-fi Christmas music in a more direct way than what I'm referring to here, which is awesome. I highly recommend you check it out. But even without getting into that craziness, microtonality is a big part of the genre. Samples will modulate 10, 20 cents. It's not uncommon to hear a quarter tone in this style of music. This, of course, is due to the degraded nature of the sampling used. Microtonality and use of these unquantized grooves subverts reality. They pull you into an impressionistic dream state, and most importantly, capture a shared feeling lost in time that we all can relate to. Lo-fi is impressionistic, it's dissociative, yet uniquely relatable in a way that feels raw and real. The simplicity, spaciousness, and repetitive nature of the genre gives us a wide space to explore our own emotions. I think what I like best about the genre is the music doesn't tell you how to feel. It allows us to mold it into whatever we need it to be. Thanks so much for watching this video. It was an absolute blast to make. This video is a little bit different from what I normally do. I'm trying my hand at longer form content. If you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and if you want to support this channel, the best thing you can do is engage in the comments below and share this video with a friend. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I started making this video in November, um, which is why I mentioned Christmas Creep at the beginning, and I was going to have this big tie-in at the end, um, but it unexpectedly took me two months to make this video, so it's probably going to come out right before Christmas. So, uh, yeah. Uh, you're not getting that. <laughs> Future Levi, plan better.